Okay, <clears throat> that's right two o'clock uh, on my end, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, if uh, you're joining us from the previous session where we discussed the WHO packages and uh, what the, the initiative is, then you'll see that this is a continuation where we're going to speak specifically about the TB tracker packages as well as the use of uh, tracker for TB in Tanzania and Mozambique. So we have a number of uh, great speakers that are going to share with us. Uh, you'll get uh, starting off uh, an update from uh, Tomas at uh, WHO that is going to give us some sense of what the goals war were for these packages um, and, and how they can be used. And we'll proceed from there, taking a look at the TV packages and then hear from uh, Tanzania and from Mozambique. So I won't talk too much longer. I'll just turn it over to you, Tomas, to uh, take us away. Thank you, Mike. Share the screen. Okay, can you see it? We're seeing it, but we're seeing your kind of presentation view instead of the full slide. Okay. There we go. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you, Mike, for the introduction. Wait, now, I, now I think we, we may have lost your slides at this point, sorry. At least I'm <laughs> seeing, now I'm seeing you. <laughs> okay. Uh, once again does it work now uh, it's back to that presentation view although I can see it fine so maybe we just go with it like this if we're having troubles because we'll be able to see as you flip through the slides anyway okay. so thank you Mike for the introduction and thank you everyone for joining this session I'm Tomas Matas and I'm working in WHO Global TV program in monitoring and evaluation unit. And I would like to walk you through uh, the collaboration we have done on the WHO uh, TV packages with the University of Oslo during the last couple of years. So the short history of the, the short history uh, of uh, the collaboration, it started in 2015 when uh, we have developed uh, 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 the platform initially to support countries to uh, analyze data. We have conducted two regional workshops in Africa, but very quickly we learned that the platform, uh, the DHS2 platform is in high demand and we started developing the WHO standard package for the aggregated data. We as well provided countries the TB history platform where uh, it was meant for countries in transition while uh, they are waiting for their home instance uh, that they could use it for uh, safeguarding of their historical data or continuing the data analysis while in production in their own country. In 2017, we, we joined the Strategic Initiative on Data funded by Global Fund and the Health Data Collaborative Group, uh, which focused on development and dissemination of the standardized uh, DHS2 modules across all the diseases. So we talk here not only about TB, but about malaria, HIV, immunization, and so on. We finally managed to publish the aggregated DHS2 package for TB together with the, the TB curriculum, which is basically set of guides and example exercises to support the data analysis and use of uh, the dashboards, which are embedded in the TB aggregated module. We have uh, done the regional uh, or installation workshop for six African countries. We have done another two additional workshops in Latin America and Asia. And uh, well, we started developing uh, the WHO standard TB module for case-based surveillance, which was recently published in August. Uh, we as well uh, do the workshops on data analysis and use, which usually follow up on the 
on the implementation installation of the of the TV module, and we uh, our team uh, uses the the platform for the epidemiological reviews of the countries, where we have a need to uh, analyze the country data in standard way across all different countries. So here's the quick overview where the DHIS2 was already introduced. It doesn't mean that all these countries uh, are using or will be using the DHIS2. What it very often it helps at least to trigger some follow-up actions, for example, in countries where the TB surveillance have uh, already existing uh, working system, but they don't have any, any visualization, they don't have any dashboards, indicators, and people have to uh, uh, basically extract the data and uh, use another statistical software Stata or R. So this is one uh, or another another opportunity for countries. It's not just to implement the DHS2, but as well um, maybe just to take the idea of, of the routine data analysis using the standard indicators and dashboards. So in general, the purpose of the DHS2 modules is to uh, promote the health uh, standards across all the administrative levels. We know that uh, if we are lucky, we get the new guidelines and best practice practices to the national level, but then it's very difficult to disseminate uh, those to the lower levels or even to the facility level. Uh, we would like to promote uh, the routine data analysis and use at all the, all the facility levels, because currently the, the lowest levels they uh, are basically detached from the data uh, use process. They only compile the, the records and aggregate and report to the lower, uh, higher levels. So we would like to really uh, use this opportunity to, to enable or to give access to the data to all uh, levels in the country, as well uh, to uh, enable to secure the historical data, data to safeguard historical data to enable the long time and long, uh, the trend analysis over time to understand the epidemiology, epidemiology for, um, situation in your country uh, because uh, or, or, or to link uh, the DHIS2, to, to use it as a DHIS2 warehouse and to link it to your existing system and uh, to extract the historical data this way. We can as well import the historical data from uh, Excel spreadsheets. Uh, why the uh, standard modules were developed? Because as I said at the beginning, we learned that there is high demand and each country started developing their own system or their own TB module. So we used the, we take this opportunity to, to promote the standard, uh, the baseline module, which uh, we, uh, recommend as uh, as the core uh, then to promote the collaboration between uh, the countries uh, we try to organize the annual meetings installation workings etc uh, we believe that uh, it's not only um, us or other partners going to the countries but uh, it works very well when the country uh, talks to other country and they can discuss their um, bottlenecks and what are the successes and share the stories which we will actually hear during the um, upcoming presentation from Tanzania and Mozambique. Uh, quickly about the aggregated module, uh, we, uh, it's based on the 2013 recording and reporting framework. Uh, it includes the standard quarterly data forms, uh, standard set of dashboards with core indicators uh, required by Global Fund and WHO. It has all other functionalities uh, as uh, standard DHIS2. And uh, we have uh, one additional feature, which I hope uh, it will be available for uh, the core DHIS2 app, which is the side-by-side -side comparison of the national level data. Now about the case-based module. Uh, of course, Yuri will uh, discuss or describe this in details. I just wanted to say that uh, uh, we have uh, 
develop this for both for uh, DR and DSTB. It's a uh, it has some interesting features as a working list. It has uh, um, some uh, draft dashboards currently, and it has uh, the link uh, to the aggregated uh, package, which we still believe it's uh, the that's that would be the baseline for the data analysis, whether you use the aggregated data or the TB checker. Of course, each country can edit uh, and add more uh, variables uh, as well uh, on the dashboards. The dashboards are just uh, understood as a, please understood as a baseline information. You can disaggregate further the indicators or add the more indicators depending on the country needs. Uh, Yuri will as well uh, discuss or showcase the constants which we use, uh, which will enable you just to simply turn on and off uh, different options in the tracker. There is a built-in uh, automatic classification of the cases, which is very useful feature. Uh, there is uh, as well automatic feedback on some of the actions you are taking during the use of the tracker and so forth. Uh, this is the current situation of the implementation of the WHO TB modules. Uh, we have uh, the blue, the dark blue are the countries which are using currently the aggregated case-based system. The blue one are the countries where uh, we are uh, piloting or in process of integration, one of the modules and the red one where uh, we have used, as I mentioned, the, the epidemiological review, and uh, we are as well engaged. Uh, future next steps quickly. Uh, we are basically, uh, from the headquarter, we are trying to support the countries as much as possible, through whether directly or through the country and regional offices. There is a new strategic initiative on data funded by Global Fund, which I believe most of the countries are aware. And uh, we really uh, wish to, to support and help uh, the implementation and the uptake of the, these uh, WHO standard packages. We are able to in, uh, or organize another installation workshop. We are uh, planning to do more in-country and regional data workshops. And uh, we as well plan to start uh, doing the readiness assessments where we would like to understand better what's the current situation in country and how the country is ready is not, or is not ready for the implementation mainly of the case-based uh, solution. Uh, as well, we will keep updating the WHO modules both uh, because we have new guidelines on treatment regimens and uh, on drugs and on testing uh, coming. So there is still a lot to be done. And we are working on the new DHS2 modules as uh, the DRS module for the drug uh, resistance survey, uh, lab module and uh, LMIS modules. So thank you, thank you everyone for your attention. Uh, please, uh, if you have uh, any questions or you would like to follow up, uh, let me know and uh, I'll be happy to come back. Thank you everyone. Okay. Thank you so much. And a reminder to everybody, the link to the community of practice where you can post questions is in the chat. Um, and we will have a, a bit of time maybe at the end for some live questions, but we'll see how that goes. So. Turning the time over now to my colleague uh, Yuri, an implementer with us here in Oslo, who has been uh, working with Tomas and team on the configuration of this set of packages. So he'll walk us through that for a bit. Uh, hello, everyone. <clears throat> Do, uh, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Uh, yep. Yes. Okay. Thanks. So I'm uh, uh, very happy uh, to introduce the WHO TBK surveillance tracker package which we published in August 2020. Uh, well, the release was slightly delayed due to several factors, including a COVID outbreak, but we are sure that the result is worth uh, the time we spent on it. Uh, well, uh, the, the module is uh, a baseline that, uh, as Tom said, that follows the minimum requirements for 
uh, data surveillance uh, and as you will experience it has a lot of uh, program logic built into it but at the same time it provides simple workflow and support for end users uh, the module uh, it can be used on both web and Android platforms as I said is a generic package and which requires some uh, configuration <clears throat> but the process is simple and well documented but I will get back to this topic uh, shortly so um, this the package can be also uh, easily customized to the country needs so uh, the uh, the TBK surveillance track is aligned with the WHO definitions and reporting framework 2013 uh, and it is designed to capture case-based uh, TB surveillance data so uh, in other words it's not built as a patient or data management uh, tool <clears throat> but we'll see what comes up in the in the future uh, the uh, TB Tracker comes with a long list of uh, indicators uh, that are designed for quarterly TB reporting on notifications, first line and second line treatment outcomes, as well as the GTB report. But I will get back to the uh, indicators uh, in the later slides. Um, here is the overview of the program. <clears throat> As you see, we're following the enrollment, which captures uh, you know, the, the, the necessary attributes and the, uh, the enrolling facility, <clears throat> we move to the red, uh, TB registration details, uh, where we capture the uh, baseline information on the patient, uh, the risk factors and the HIV status, uh, there's a very extensive uh, laboratory uh, stage <clears throat> which uh, is repeatable uh, <clears throat> for each sample that is tested uh, in the lab. And as you can see on there, the list of available tests is, um, uh, is long and I will get back to the, to the setup and the configuration in the next slide. Then uh, comes the treatment stage where, where the tr drug resistant classification is recorded and the tri treatment regimen and the status uh, is captured. And uh, stage four is the health outcome uh, where uh, the, the, we register the outcome of the treatment uh, or the notification in case the case is not a TB. Uh, case. <clears throat> um, well, uh, to question of the configuration. So one of the design decisions uh, for the TBK surveillance tracker was to provide countries with a set of available diagnostic tests and anti-TB anti drugs and then let the countries configure the package according to their requirements. So the option of adding or removing parts of the package with help of constants makes the package more comprehensive but at the same time easy to localize adapt and change so let's say if uh, in 2020 the labs in the country are not using a certain test let's say lpa but then they start using it in 2021 it is possible to add that test to the data entry form just within one click rather than creating sets of metadata and indicators from scratch. Uh, the same applies to removing uh, certain parts of the uh, forms or hiding them without actually having to delete the uh, metadata. <clears throat> so this process is uh, uh, documented in the, uh, in the installation guide, which uh, is located on the DHS2 uh, website. <clears throat> Um, we have uh, another feature in the TB package, which uh, can be very helpful and is quite new. Uh, and these are the working lists and the line lists that enable filtering patients by certain criteria, uh, or they just help provide support uh, for, for follow up. So uh, the working lists, these are the, the lists that you see 
uh, at the enrollment, uh, uh, the registration screen. And uh, there uh, we can filter by all the current patients, by patients that have not started treatment yet, patients that don't have an uh, outcome record, uh, or patients that have actually finished enrollment, but they're still not marked as completed. And then in the, uh, <clears throat> on the dashboards, we have the line lists that provide further details and overview of the patients based on the event data. <clears throat> so the, the data that is entered in the lab stage, treatment stage, and the outcome. So here we're looking at, let's say, patients with unknown HIV status or patients that uh, have not started uh, treatment or have no recorded treatment initiation date, people that have a delay uh, in treatment initiation uh, or patients that have no outcome recorded. So these tools can be very helpful for, for clinicians and, and end users. Um, <clears throat> another uh, thing that Thomas already has mentioned is the program logic. It's, it sub summarizes the uh, entered data and provides a lot of instant feedback uh, to the user. This includes uh, certain date validation rules, the feedback messages, warnings, errors, and in addition, uh, the program processes the, the data that is entered in the forms. <clears throat> I will use the example of the case classification. So uh, the data that is entered in the laboratory stage uh, is being processed and then the program classifies the patient as clinically or bacteriologically diagnosed, drug susceptible, drug resistant, uh, rifampicin resistant, uh, monoresistant, polyresistant, MDR patients or XDR patients. Uh, so uh, this data, of course, is then used uh, further in, uh, in when producing indicators. Uh, uh, but at the same time, the clinicians that they have the opportunity to override this automatic, automatically generated data uh, if necessary. So this fun functionality is available in the in the uh, in the program. Um, the uh, as you know, the enrollment in a TB program can take several years, uh, but so it is possible that the patient changes the facility within one enrollment. So uh, here we can have several examples. Let's say uh, a patient moves from one place to the other and needs to be transferred to another facility, or a patient uh, uh, gets, well, is tested and uh, is an MDR resistant patient and then needs to be transferred to an MDR clinic. <clears throat> and then, uh, we have uh, in the in the tracker the the option to refer or transfer that patient permanently from one place to the other, whereas the, all the data still remains uh, recorded uh, with with that patient or with the tracked entity that we are referring. Uh, another kind of transfer can be a one-time referral of the case. Uh, in in the best example here is the lab stage, so where lab specialists get access to the event of entering lab uh, data for the referred patients and then they uh, the patient actually remains registered in the um, initial facility um, so Yuri, I was just going to give you a two minute warning here yes thanks thanks Mike I I'm uh, uh, skipping uh, some things so uh, well, many countries are using or are familiar with the uh, WHO TB packages for aggregated data. So the data that is entered in the TB case surveillance track is aggregated, uh, well, in alignment with the data sets in these aggregate packages. And the data can be then seamlessly transferred into the uh, data set reports from the from tracker to the aggregate. There are several ways to do it. Uh, uh, there are scripts that we will provide, and then there is a, a great app which is in the app store of, of the DHS2 uh, developed by HISP uh, Tanzania. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, 
this also means that if let's say part of a country is using aggregate data packages but then another using the tracker then the data aggregated at the high levels uh, it, it remains consistent and, and um, the uh, packages the, the package uh, supports the decentralized workflow which means that uh, we uh, provide user groups and, and different levels of access for certain for different areas of the program lab uh, and, and or analytics data admin or metadata admin and so on and so forth uh, and uh, last but not least um, so the uh, Thomas also mentioned the DRS survey this package will be published in October uh, and um, a lot is aligned between these two packages uh, and it comes with uh, it will fall will come with a lot of monitoring dashboards that could be useful uh, in the in the countries so yes I would like to thank all my colleagues from UIO and WHO and his groups and the global community for their support and uh, thank you for the uh, for your attention Great. Thanks a lot, Yuri. And uh, these slides, uh, along with all of them from the presenters, will be uploaded to the session so that you can have the links there and, and spend a bit more time looking at this configuration. Um, it's uh, new, hot off the press, so we're, we're very happy to have people have access to them, and the DRS one is coming soon. So with I, that, I, just, I will... Oh, go Thermo, I would just like to add that it will, if anyone is interested in more information and, and demo, uh, well, uh, the, the, we have a demo of TB case surveillance, but then don't hesitate to contact us at any time and we'll uh, guide you and help you. Great. So that will we'll turn uh, over to uh, Dr. Zuena Kondo from the Ministry of Health in Tanzania, a monitoring and evaluation officer, to talk to us about their experiences uh, using Tracker for TB. So please, Dr. Zuena. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you guys. Good day to all. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Zuena from the Ministry of Health Tanzania, working with the um, National TB and Lepros Program. I'm going to share with you a little bit of uh, our experience with the use of the TB tracker. So this is just a background of uh, Tanzania for those who are not familiar with her. It's a fairly um, big country with around 900,000 square kilometers, population around 56 million people. And we have a total of healthcare facilities around 8,000, but majority of them are at the lower level. So the healthcare organization is organized in this way from the mayor, the lower levels of the community, the villages, and then um, the facility, health facilities, and then the district level, regional, and the national level where the Ministry of Health sits. So what happened? Um, as Dr. Asma had um, clearly said during the opening of this uh, conference that if we cannot measure progress, we cannot make progress. So this is actually what happened in 2013 when WHO had assessed our TB surveillance system and found out that actually it can no, not really um, measure the progress which we, we need to. To measure. So the main finding was that we have a, we had a paper and an electronic kind of uh, um, a, a system mixed, I have it, but the electronic one which was uh, we were using was really not functional uh, optimally, and uh, and also we had faced challenges in upgrading, um, especially because the expertise was not in country. And um, but it was also noted that um, in the country, the Ministry of Health was um, rolling up the DHIS two for the healthcare service, the routine the routine data. So it was recommended that for us um, to move to the electronic case um, record and reporting so that we can really um, be able to measure the true burden of, the, of, the, of that disease in, in our country. So um, we said, how are we going to, to tackle this? Because we had a previous experience at this time, we said we don't need just a system, but we really need a system which can be sustainable, meaning that the system will stay with us over time and we can be able to maintain um, as we continue with it. So we, um, we theorize that if we have a correct design and the correct resources availability at the right time, and uh, we go through the correct um, processes like engaging all stakeholders, especially the lower level stakeholders, the users, and the bottom-up 
for approach and, and also making sure that we have appropriate strategies and policies which can back up us up, then we will be able um, to have a system which can really give us um, an output which we are, we are desiring. So this is uh, what happened. Um, because we had a history of using BHIS 2 with our ministry, so we contracted our University of Dar es Salaam, which is um, part of the HISP, HISP Tanzania, and we decided on DHIS2 for all the, the good reasons, you know. And uh, we were able to get the, the fund from the Global Fund and also programmatic um, technical assistance from the USID. So we went with all the processes, we, we did the assessment, and then we, we called the stakeholders and did the requirement gathering and, and the procurement of, of the hardware. But in place, we, we, um, there were some guidelines which really backed us up such as the ICT policy, because of this, um, we have um, the country has a, a fiber optic, which uh, is supporting to make sure that um, areas, so many areas, they have um, internet access. But also we have our e-health strategy, which, which guided us. And later on in 2018, um, the ministry had developed the health information system guidance. But also the country's um, ruling party manifesto actually has a target for electronization of the patient information. So having all these um, strategies and guidelines really um, supported us. This is just a snapshot of our journey. As you can see, um, what to note here is that um, during the 2013, 2020, 2014, we started with the aggregate, with the aggregate um, system. But 2016, this, that is when we embarked on the TB tracker, and uh, we were able to do the, the pilot for two months for, for, for three regions, and our programmatic technical assistant did the evaluation, and we were given a green light. So came 2018, we rolled up uh, this system country-wise. So since 2018, we are using this system. We've also um, entered the 2017 back backload data so that we can get the outcome. So since then, this is the system um, we are using. And uh, Yuri has talked about the system and, and Thomas. Um, so this is basically, we have um, three registers the TB register, MDR, and the culture DST. This is the laboratory part, which I'm going to talk about this tomorrow. I have a session of that. The data entrance is almost from um, 3,000 um, areas where we have TB clinics, and the main um, the data entrance are, are the main the, the, the district coordinators, but also there are some facilities around 15% which can, can enter data directly. So the district coordinators, um, every month they go around all facilities, every detail C has around 10 facilities, they go around and making sure that um, they enter this data. As uh, previous um, speakers had said, um, the system has variable, um, um, like the, the coded variables, the program rules, the quality checks. Uh, I can see the Yuri was calling them the working list. We call them the quality checks um, list and all that. So this is an example of, of, of our system. You can see that a little bit more because we have leprosy as well. Um, we get to get all these beautiful visualizations and also because uh, with assistance with WHO, we were able to archive our data. Um, since 2019. And this is just an example where the healthcare workers really used um, this output uh, to discuss the trends um, for our TB situation when in, we were doing the situation analysis for our completed NSP and we were developing our, our new NSP. So what happened, as I said, we were very cautious at, at, at the very first. Um, so I did an assessment last year to find out um, if we are going to live with this system. As you can see, a lot of factors um, giving a green light for sustainability, like using a local developer. This was easy, easy to get them, easy to read them, even the language. We understood each other, but also the policies, the guidelines in place really supported us. Um, the, beautiful nature of the software, the DHIS2, but also the fact that um, they are at the user's level. There's real support and, and ownership. You can see the users, mostly are permanent staff, around 54% of them. And, and also they had also had uh, previous basic computer knowledge, which was very essential. And they had an actually on-site uh, maintenance for the ICT, for the small, small issues like troubleshooting and all that. 
there is high acceptance. All the interviews were accepted that the system is useful to them. And actually, you can see now reporting, we get the reports 14 days after a quarter ends, which we usually um, had to, to get them 40 days after. But also the fact that even the private facilities um, all um, are using this, this system. Well, we still have some red lights um, um, and danger our sustainability um, um, part, um, like the dependence on the DHIS to support per se. The dependence is still up at the national level or at the, uh, at the developer directly. So we don't have this capacity at the subnational, but also the internet cost for those peripheral areas uh, where we do not have a good connect, connect, connection. But also on the use, as, you, as you've seen, a lot of have accepted that the system is good to them because of extraction of the report, simply because the reports are the ones which are being imposed to them but really they, they, are, they have not um, mentioned much of really their own use. But also procurement, we noted that um, all of the, uh, most of the, of the hardwares which were being used were procured by national level. Only in very few facilities where the PCs are from the councils themselves. So um, from that, um, I can say that we have been living with DHIS2 for quite some time, almost seven years, and almost two and, and a half years for the TB tracker part. So sustainability of the electronic health um, management information system is actually, um, can be actually real, uh, realized. Um, but we need the existing structures to be strengthened. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Swena. It's really great to hear uh, the good work that Tanzania is doing. Uh, so next, we'll uh, we'll move to our colleague Zeferino. Uh, Zeferino has many years working with DHS2, supporting uh, a number of countries. Uh, he also is the His Mozambique South Digitus Group, and they have been working on uh, implementing a TB tracker right alongside the work that we've been doing together with WHO. So we'll be really interested to hear how things are going there. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, I'm not sure if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see it. We're, we're seeing it the same way that we saw Tomas's with the kind of slide preview. Uh, but if, uh, if that's uh, difficult to switch, that's fine. We can still see it. Oh, well, that works. Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, thank you very much. My name is, as I said, my name is Efrain Sojen, and I'm leading a team here, uh, the group of guys that uh, we uh, consider as a uh, sub is the old DHS expert that are uh, supporting the Lusophone community. So I'll be sharing here the experience that we have uh, while supporting the implementation uh, special of the track or TB pages. So, uh, and then it's special looking at this, uh, the, the, the example or the, the experience of Mozambique so that, uh, that adopted DHS2 in 2015 and then the national TB program was one of the the, the, the program that uh, started uh, ad, uh, adopting the case-based surveillance uh, for and um, uh, this is a system as uh, actually the, the TB packages have been considered as a good start since there were a lot of guidelines already embedded that my colleagues, my previous colleagues have mentioned. And um, currently the system is in use and uh, it has been launched and then they used on routinely as a national electronic uh, uh, tool to, to track TB uh, patients or cases across the country. And then the support is done by us and then the University of Oslo. And then I, now I, th I think my colleagues have mentioned about the features that are available, especially you mentioned that I'm not going to go through the thing that we need to know here is the, the Mozambique was one of the first. Uh, if the package, as was mentioned, it was launched uh, this year, but we have been using this package since the start sometime uh, in 2015, 2016. And then the country was one of the first. And then uh, some of the experience that we are get, we, were, we bought during the, the, the customization of these autos brought back to the developers and then to improve the, 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 the tool. And recently, we, the country also embarked in the new 
Um, so since the, because of the, 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 the different or the number of uh, uh, higher incidence of TB cases, uh, especially the MDR uh, TB, the, 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 the country now decided to do a, a cross-section uh, survey, uh, which is uh, the, 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 the plan is to get this data to also be used for uh, along with the uh, the, the treatment procedures or the routine data that is received. So this guideline is also, they use the, the guideline that were developed by WHO, they are set the guidelines, and uh, where the, the guidelines were adopted and, and then adjusted a couple of years ago. But now with the, with the package, again, as you, as you mentioned, the package is going to be released uh, in October, but we are already using the, 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 the package and then the, the uh, actual on Monday, the, the, start, the implementation starts. So there, there are two clinics that are going to do the start with, with the survey. So there are a lot of experience lessons that we're going to learn and also bring it back to the, to the, to the developers. So with regard to the, uh, to the lessons uh, that we, from the pers uh, national, from the uh, national TB program perspective, I think that the, the, the implementation of the package allowed them to adhere to the top or standard package. Uh, for example, there are some protocols that are defined there. Where during the, the usual when, when you, what they they have, and then also compare to what is the, the package brings, and then there is always a process of negotiation discussion in order to both to to, to adjust the to the package according to what the, 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 is presented by, by by the by the users, as well as uh, looking at. What the, the package can bring to, to the, as a benefit for the for the for the, for the users. So the, the, also the, the, the package is uh, somehow brings a reliability as this was presented here by my colleagues, my previous colleagues. Uh, there is um, a possibility since they are all all countries are using the same package. Then there is a possibility of sharing the experiences since uh, the indicators that are looked that are used are the same. The calculation methods mechanism are similar, it's easier to, to look and then to compare the, the, the data. So there is also the smooth delivering of a, of a comprehensive digital tool, so especially, for example, for when we started uh, customizing the TB track, the country was uh, as well, had previous experience, they, they had a platform, they had a plan or they were the platform that we are trying to, to implement, but they couldn't do that. They, they chose, because they were failing to, 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 to implement or to, at least to deliver that package, the, the, the company that we hired that. So uh, by, by using this kind of packages, it helps to digitalize uh, the, the processes. And then also, the, since they are adhering to the uh, guideline, it's very easy for them to have those, everything incorporated on, 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 the, on the system. Um, yeah. With, from the perspective of customizers, uh, so, we think that okay, the genetic package are a very good place to start, and then, but it brings some challenges, especially as, as I mentioned before, there are NTP representatives that are not familiar with the guidelines. So in this case, you are there to show them on uh, develop based on guidelines, and then please let's look at what we have here. But as, on the other hand, there are they do have tools that were all designed, and then some of these tools they are not aligned to the guideline I said so there is a need of sitting with them negotiating in order to come up with the best uh, way of incorporating and sometimes you have to 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 adjust the tool and add some we did have experience previously with the with the the, the TB the, the case based and then even now uh, variables that were uh, provided by the, the country in order to be uh, to be added into the, the, the generic package. Because the, the generic package, as you know, is still, uh, since when the package is still under development, or for example, it's yet to be published, there's still some uh, information that is not yet there. And then the experience, like for example, that we, can, we will get during the implementation here that we can provide to the generic or to the developers to, 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 to improve the package. So those are the, the, the different challenges that you usually face when you are doing, when you are actual, uh, when you are the first to, to, to come to that, at least to adopt the package. Uh, yeah, you have, that, you have to deal with that. Um, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the last point is talking about the, the approach 
is not yet there. The, uh, this is mentioned uh, the, the packaging approach that um, uh, we, it, it was not in place when back on trade two fifteen to sixteen when as mentioned as Mata mentioned uh, the, the process uh, they, were, they are still starting to think how the, the package can be developed and then provided to the country. So we started at that point to check the packages and then this is also bringing other uh, challenges that need to be uh, addressed. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, this is, uh, puts us in the, into the dilemma on how to, to lead the process of negotiation. So you need to see the, the local needs against the generic package. Sometimes you have to uh, remove what is not required, the features that are not required, and then add new features. For now, for example, if, uh, is, uh, as it was mentioned again by Yuri, Currently, you do have this. We are using constants. You can go there and then just plug and uh, unplug, and then plug when you need. In the beginning, we didn't have that. So you have to go there to remove that that element, or you have to use that and then try to prove. Representative, those are not familiar with the guideline that this is important. So those are the things that you also need to, uh, of course, take into 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 account. Uh, or, you know, sharing these all these needs. Uh, all these requests with the package developer so that they can they can uh, improve the package as well as for example take bringing those guidelines discussing with the NTP representatives trying to understand to see what, what is the benefit of using those guidelines uh, some of the, the lessons that we have learned uh, so far during the adoption of this uh, generic uh, package with that uh, I would say a uh, hand here thank you very much for listening Great. Thank you, Zeferino. And it's, uh, yes, it's adopting the packages uh, in the early on stages can, can lead to some challenges. Um, but uh, it's uh, also been helpful for us to see the real uh, experience of uh, Mozambique as they go through. It's led us towards some of these decisions to try to make the adoption of the packages easier. So we have just about six or seven minutes left uh, for questions. I see a couple of them in the community of practice that uh, we can address, but also if you feel like uh, unmuting yourself uh, at some point and asking a question, uh, please do so. Uh, the first one uh, that I would uh, bring up and then uh, feel free Tomas to jump in on this, but there was a question about the link between the standard package and gen expert um, and whether we can uh, do an automated link there to receive that data uh, this is something we've been in discussions uh, with the, the gen expert people around uh, the and uh, a previous solution that has made this kind of a connection um, and it's something that we do want to do in the future but we haven't done it yet uh, i don't know tomas did you if you want to add anything to that yeah, we, we have basically, it's because of the COVID, we, we lost uh, the pilot projects because everything was put on hold. So uh, without that, uh, we would have more information to share. Currently, we have piloted this uh, solution in, in two countries and uh, we were hoping to learn more, but uh, during the COVID situation, it, uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, we have uh, not more to share. But th there is a work being done, and uh, we hope that uh, we will share more soon. Okay, all right. Uh, there was another question in the community of practice about the script that we're using to push data from tracker to aggregate. Uh, Yuri, do you want to mention uh, about the script and, and anything about how it works or how people use it? Well, uh, I'm I'm just about to uh, publish the answer uh, to uh, on the community of practice. Well, <clears throat> uh, there the script itself uh, it just basically looks at the uh, at the codes of the uh, program indicators and then the codes of the um, uh, aggregate data elements and then includes the reporting period and the organization units. Uh, and basically, that's that. And I, I'm sure that uh, different uh, countries use different ways uh, for that script. We are currently developing a kind of a generic script that we can uh, publish alongside our packages uh, that will be available for everyone. But I will share the, the information on the community of practice. Uh, 
<clears throat> so when it comes to the TB package, that the, the published package has already uh, got all the mappings done so that the program indicators can uh, be can trans be transferred to the data elements of the aggregate packages. So <clears throat> if that helps, the, that's that's what I can add now. Yeah. Great. Thanks for that. Uh, I don't see other questions in the community of practice. Is there anybody that's uh, listening that wants to unmute themselves and uh, ask a question? Maybe while we, we wait to see again, we just have a couple of more minutes, but Zeferino, I have a, a question for you. So with the packages process, even when people are adopting the fully published package, the, the first step that we always are recommending is that of course the, the countries sit down and review their own national guidelines in comparison with what is in the package, um, having the information about uh, what the recommended WHO guidelines are. And that, that process can take quite some time um, in order to ensure that you know what is in the package is what the country wants to implement and it's adapted to their needs. Could you give any thoughts about uh, how you handled that, those discussions? Uh, was there kind of a, a clear process for that with Mozambique or uh, how long do you think it would take to go through that process for, for the TB package? Um, any, any insights there about how that process went? Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, I, I, I told that there is no clear direct answer for that because it's the, it take, depends on the, 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 the perspective or the needs of the people that you are interacting with. Uh, so I will just uh, do a generic, uh, for example, when you started, we, at some point, we, apart from the truck, truck a TB truck, and then the DRS, we did have the... the yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes. I was saying, apart from the TB truck and then the, 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 the DRS, we did have the dashboards. Uh, actually, the dashboards are the easiest part to, to, to do. But when we went to the, the, to the NTP, we, we went there, the, we found they were, they were having a list of 235 indicators. So that those, those indicators were not in the package. So there was, there was a process where we had to go through all these indicators and then see what, which indicators are in the package and then try to see how are they going to use the, 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 if they do the indicators that are linked to end decision making process that they, 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 are, they, they are going to they usually go through. Then we found that uh, some, most of the indicators are not, they are just defined in there because some, some of the, 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 the partners they, they were asking at some point those uh, to, 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 to those kind of information. And then and it, so we had to go through all these process together and then I, I identify all this, the, the, the indicators, everything, the definition, and then select those ones that are coming with the package and then map them and then the rest discuss, see how we can generate that, the, 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 the one that they, they, they do have that, that are not coming with the package. So I, 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 if I can answer directly, there is, there's not, there is no clear process on how you can go through, depending, especially if there are uh, individuals that, are, that, 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 are, that they know about the existence of the package. And with DRS, uh, and then there was, when we start doing the customization or when we, we, the, the, the program approached us and then we knew that there was the, 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 the discussion for them, we started discussing with the University of Oslo and the WHO, and then they, 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 they came up with, a, with what the, the form that they were, they were planning to use. And then at that, at that point we said that okay, there will be uh, there is this package that, has, that, that, that means that it is being conceived uh, to, 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 to be used. And then at that point we have to look at what uh, was in the form, what the, what was in the package. And then luckily in the in the team, the, the NTP, the, the, there was someone who knew about this, the standard, the guidelines, and then it helps a lot. Was to I to to convince somehow the 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 the, 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 for the, the, the NTP that some of these indicators that they are requesting they are not necessary because they are doing a survey some most of the information that they are they are, they, they, they wanted to to capture with survey is already captured by the routine information system so it was 
based on that, we, we could identify, say, okay, now this information you can get from your routine system. Now you want, you want, you are, you are going to do a survey. So we can only focus, for example, on the specific information that you cannot get on your, on, 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 on your routine system. So uh, 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 there are several issues that, that, that need to be taken into account. But uh, it depends, it varies from place to place, from the individual that you are going to interact with. If they, are, they know all the, 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 the guidelines, they know, uh, since the guidelines, the, the package that developed on the guidelines, they know the information system here, and then also ultimately, they know how are they going to use that information that they're going to, to, to generate from the system. Because at the end of the day, all information needs to be used for something. And if they don't, they're not clear about the output, it's going to be very difficult for you to define, to discuss with them what they, the input that the system can get, can, 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 that can, the system can, can uh, be uh, ready to capture. Thank you. Great, thanks. Uh, we're, we're pretty much then out of time. I, I would just on that last point say that uh, a big part of the reason that, you know, where we and WHO are, are promoting these packages is actually to help with some standardization in countries and also help adherence to global recommendations and guidelines. So it may even be a, a good idea to think of, you know, initiating national guidelines conversations when the process uh, is starting for adopting these packages. Having the package there that contains the, the global guidance as uh, part of the configuration can help those conversations but also thinking what that really means in terms of time and what it would take to get around to implementing, that can be quite an extensive process. So again, you may, you may need to be careful about kicking off a national guidelines conversation. So with that, uh, we'll have to end this session. Um, those of you that are uh, uh, planning to attend the HIV uh, case surveillance and HIV tracker session, that's starting up in the same link in just another five minutes. But we'll, we'll take five minutes ourselves to be able to make sure that the next presenters are connected and have their audio and video working. So thank you, everybody. Thank you to the presenters. Uh, very nice to hear about all of the efforts behind TV. And uh, yes, we look forward to the next session on HIV.